Hello, and welcome to four types of newsletters to send to your clients now. I'm Lisa. In case you don't know, we are celebrating the launch of Poster My Wall's new email marketing platform. This tool works seamlessly with our design tools, and it's going to make it really effortless for you to create gorgeous, gorgeous email newsletters and campaigns. Just look at all these drag and drop templates just waiting for you. Celebrate this great new feature, we've invited Sharon Taunton, who is an email marketing expert and a newsletter expert to join us today. Sharon is the co-author of Valuable Content Marketing, How to Make Quality Content the Key to Your Success. She's also a teacher at the School of Valuable Content. I was introduced to Sharon through one of my favorite newsletters, uh, which just raved about her expertise, so we feel very fortunate to have her here today. In the next few minutes, Sharon is going to introduce you to the four main types of newsletters that work brilliantly for small business. She's also going to give you some tips to help you figure out which of these newsletter types is best for you. If you're starting a newsletter or are going to revamp an existing newsletter, this is a class that will really benefit you. If you'd like to see more Poster My Wall classes and demos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As a bonus, at the end of class, we're going to share a link to Sharon's presentation that you can download. So welcome, Sharon. It's great to have you here today. Thanks very much. I'm glad to be here. Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, um, as Lisa said, my name's Sharon Tanton and I'm from the School of Valuable Content. I'm the co-author of the Valuable Content Marketing book, which I wrote with my friend and business partner, Sonia. We wrote it to help small businesses owners um, kind of create and share the right content so they attract more clients, grow their communities and win more of the work they absolutely love to do. And today I'm gonna to be talking about email newsletters. Um, how this session's gonna work, I'm going to run through some ideas which I hope will inspire you either to start a newsletter or maybe kickstart one if you've got one that you've fallen out of love with doing. I've pinpointed four styles that I see working really well for small business owners and freelancers and I think there will be a style amongst those that will help you um, get where you want to go suit your business and your goals. I'll talk you through how to pick the right style for you um, and I'll highlight the elements that all good newsletters share. But before we get started, I just want to um, talk about what I mean by a newsletter. What I mean is a regular email communication that's sent to a list of people that have subscribed to hear from you. People who've given you your email address, maybe in exchange for a piece of free content, or maybe it's somebody that you met in, in the real world, in real life, and that's interested in staying in touch with you. Or maybe they found you online and they like what you're selling or teaching or offering. The key thing within, within, with newsletter communication is that it's a list of absolutely genuine connections. Newsletter styles vary, you can get there's so many different shapes and sizes, um, but the people on a good newsletter list are really happy to be there. Um, um, and why do newsletters matter so much? I really think that kind of your newsletter is the, the jewel in your marketing crown. Um, this quote is a guide from David Hyatt, who has a really successful newsletter. Um, um, he, you can read it there. He says, our newsletter is without a doubt our most critical tool for growing our business bar none. I love Instagram. I love Twitter. I love Medium. I've even begun to love Facebook, but without a newsletter, I couldn't gather all those people in one place and have a slower conversation with them. And I think that phrase, a slower conversation, is a really good one to keep in your mind. Um, for many people, I think that an email newsletter can be the crucial missing link in their digital marketing system. You might have a website, you might blog, maybe you're active on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook, but you don't have this one piece that joins it all together and that's the newsletter. That's why it matters so much. Um, newsletters are brilliant for visibility. Um, social media will keep you in the public eye, but social media platforms are rented spaces. And you need a way of communicating that's all your own. And that's your newsletter. Plus, social media platforms are so busy, they're kind of blink and you miss it with, when it comes to them. A newsletter, even an unopened one in an inbox, helps keep you front of mind with the people that matter to you. They're really good for keeping in touch and building trust over time. Too many businesses kind of are chasing new business all the time when existing clients and customers are far more valuable and regular communication with, with them is a way to build up that trust and keep you front of mind. A newsletter can become a really important part of your customer service. 
Um, if you send regular relevant newsletters that help people on your list with the challenges that you know they've got, um, you'll get even more people, they'll get even more out of working with you and they'll stick around more and they're likely to refer you and recommend you to their friends. Another reason why they're, I, I think they're so useful is they're real, a real good place for research and development for your business. A growing list of people who've opted to hear from you can really fuel, um, fuel your business. You can ask questions in your newsletter and you can have conversations and you get all these insights into what your audience is thinking and feeling. Um, and that can help you design new products, new services, new courses. So it, you're kind of building in this way of developing your business through your newsletter. Maybe the last, the most important thing is it's really good for sales. For some people, that's absolutely the biggest thing. Keeping in touch with your current contacts builds trust over time and really makes selling your products and services so much easier. Everyone in business needs a way of keeping in touch regularly and your newsletter could be just that. Um, according to a study by McKinsey, for every dollar you put into email marketing, you get back 40 times more than you would through Facebook, Instagram and almost every other marketing channel. And lots of everyday businesses are winning because of their email newsletter. And it's a key route to client work, new client work for me. Um, your newsletter can create a steady rhythm for your marketing, helping you sell products or services over the long term. Or you can really, really push it so it becomes a source of income in itself. And continually sharing valuable content in this way can take you to some surprising places. Your newsletter can become so valuable in its own right that people will pay for it in their thousands. Um, there's a woman that I follow from the States, a woman called Heather Cox, Cox Richardson. She's an American press professor who writes about US politics with a historian's eye view of events. And she's got over 10,000 subscribers uh, who pay her $50 a year so they can comment on her blogs. Um, and that's not the kind of newsletter I'm focusing on today. I'm talking on about free newsletters as a route to selling your own products and services. Although I absolutely love that ambition. Creating something that's so valuable that people will pay for it um, is a really great aim to have. So newsletters are great. Um, I, I really believe every business should have one, but I know there's barriers to creating them. Um, I understand that it can be hard. Um, the reason that, that I put this webinar together in the first place was because my own community told me that they were having trouble getting going with their newsletters. They knew they wanted one, but they couldn't get started um, or they had one and they were finding it difficult to keep up momentum um, or they didn't have much of a list. So it became this chicken and egg situation. I won't start a newsletter until I have a list. I've, my list isn't big enough because I don't have a newsletter. Um, and it can be quite a, a lot of emotional blocks around right creating newsletters you feel a bit like you're putting yourself on the line this communicating one-to-one -one can feel a bit make you feel a bit vulnerable and also it might feel like you're just too busy how on earth can I fit this in I'm, I'm running in circles already how can I possibly do something else a lot of people get really stuck trying to do a newsletter but it absolutely doesn't have to be like that sending a regular newsletter can be really straightforward and really rewarding um, I think it's the most important marketing that you do. It's not effortless, it definitely is work, um, but I'm gonna show you how to make it worth your time and energy. So my plan is to show you four different styles of newsletter that I hope will inspire you to get going on yours. So the first newsletter style, um, I'm just calling the simple letter. Um, and this, is a, a, this, is, this one here is a guy called Ian Brody who writes, he's a marketer who sends out a, weekly newsletter, which um, I have subscribed to for absolutely years. Um, this newsletter style is the most straightforward type to create. Interestingly, it's a style that's favored by most freelancers or micro bloggers um, or one woman bands like me. There's also the style that many bigger companies choose as well because it makes you look small and approachable. It's popular because it's easy to make it feel very personal. It's just a letter from me to you and that absolutely pulls me in. The fact it looks like just another email rather than something highly branded can be a lure to read it as well. Um, Ian was always sharing useful ideas. Sometimes he'll make an offer in the newsletter, but it never feels pushy. Um, and I'm always happy to click on the links because he doesn't overdo it. He doesn't really put in too many of them. 
his newsletters work in the way that lots of newsletters work. Um, he usually tells a personal story up front that relates to me. Um, and that's really common among simple newsletter types. If you tell a story that pulls people into your world and use that story as a springboard for the message that you want to share. Another example of the simple newsletter is this one from Louise Fletcher Art. Um, a simple newsletter like this is a route to instant friendliness. friendliness. Um, Louise addresses the reader straight away. It's like she's right there with you um, saying what you're thinking. She's tapping into that quandary that I know a lot of my own artist friends have, um, which is I absolutely love the creative work, but I hate selling it. And Lisa says in this, um, Louise says in this newsletter, wouldn't it be nice if we could just paint? And I know and I can imagine my friends, the people who are on this newsletter list, absolutely nodding along in agreement. Um, I've had a look at her website too, and her, her newsletter is part of her mission to help you explore your rich inner world through fearless art. Her business makes money through painting and through courses, but she's not explicitly selling anything at all through this newsletter. She's just addressing an issue that she knows that people like her are struggling with, this kind of selling your work. Um, and she's offering a couple of resources to help. And this simple letter makes a really fast connection with the reader. It's got a direct conversation or writing voice and it gets straight to the heart of something that her readership really care about. So that's newsletter style one, the simple letter. Um, newsletter two is carefully curated. And this is a newsletter from the company called Hyatt Denon, which was the quote I shared, shared with you before. It's a very sort of different beast from the simple newsletter style. A lot more design energy goes into creating something like this. It works in a different way. Um, carefully curated can be a great way to go if you're trying to build a tribe. Um, you'll probably notice straight away that it's much less wordy than um, either Louise's letter or Ian's letter. Um, it's very kind of big on style and on impact, but very low on text. The way this works, Den and they share seven stories that are all written from other people and the links take you all over the internet so the, the first the first seven stories are all just things that they think their tribe will be interested in and then the last one the bottom one is a link to their jeans because they're a, a jeans manufacturer um, so that their link is kind of humbly at the bottom of the list but all the valuable quirky stylish stuff comes first and it makes their jeans feel valuable stylish and quirky in the process by association. So that's a carefully curated one. And here's another example of a carefully curated one um, that also depends on sharing links to other people's content. And if you're thinking, I haven't got the time and energy to write to absolutely tons of content myself, you could go this way, carefully curated way and just shoot a link to other people's content. Um, the skill in this style of newsletter is in finding stories that you know will entertain or educate your readership content that's going to inspire them or surprise them or intrigue them. Um, the, these kind of newsletters rarely contain a direct sales message. They kind of build trust by consistently sharing good stories. The company that does this is a PR, a marketing agency, so knowing good stories is sort of part of their DNA. And it's not personal like a letter, but it does feel very human and it is highly engaging and it absolutely works. Um, if you're going to go this, this route or all all the stories will have a theme, you'll find a theme that, that links them. Um, and that's a way to make your, to make it, to kind of create a world through your carefully created one is to pick a theme each week and curate stories around that theme. Okay, so that's style two. Style three is another kind of back to basics one, I guess. Um, this is a newsletter for, call, um, called Coach Parry, and I've called this style the insider tips one. Coach Parry is a, is a running coach, teaches you to run better, especially if you're an older runner. So it, it, it's kind of very niche market. It's not for everybody. It's for older people who want to go running. Um, so it's very niche, but really useful. Again, it's low on copy and it's minimal on design, but it's really, really big on value. And the tips which um, Coach Parry shares are often little videos that he'll drop in. Um, so that's easy to when you're out running, you can watch the tips or the, the, this one's about stretching and stuff. But so you can you can get the newsletter, you can open it up while you're while you're out and about use it on the move. Um, insider tips is a really useful style for anybody that's in the teaching business. And that means lots of coaches, trainers, therapists, people making stuff. Um, it's basic. It's, it's It hasn't got the kind of style of the um, 
the, the carefully created one, but it's super useful and I'm, and I'm sure that it helps build his business too. Um, this is another insider tips one. Um, this is actually a newsletter of a friend of mine, Caroline, who's got a business here in Bristol selling fermented foods and teaching home cooks how to ferment. And her newsletter is a roundup of cooking and fermenting tips. She does a lot of research into gut health and she shares that kind of with her inner circle of people who've signed up for her newsletter. Um, and she has courses on teaching people how to make kimchi and kefir and kombucha. She's absolutely passionate about the subject. And at the moment, if you find her on Instagram, you can see her. She's experimenting with her own diet and with a, using a glucose monitor. Um, and the newsletter is the kind of the place that she'll share these kind of things that she's that she's investigating. Um, and she's building through this Insider Tips newsletter, kind of growing community of people who really want to learn more about the amazing world of fermented food. This kind of insider tips could work for other people in, in food businesses, restaurants and stuff. You're sh sharing kind of things that people could only get from you because you know something that they don't. Um, the next newsletter style, the last one that I'm going to share today is the magazine style newsletter. Design wise, this has got more in common with the curated newsletter. This one here is for the outdoor swimmers. Um, and it's kind of got beautiful photography and short blurbs is the kind of the way that it works. But th this one works differently from the curated, curated content one because all the links, every link on here will go back to the website to a new, a, a new piece of original content. Um, so it's alerting you to the kind of all the reams of inspiring outdoor swimming content on their website. And it creates this world and it wants to keep you there for a while. So you can buy tickets to events um, and the occasional book, but mostly it's just for the love of outdoor swimming. But if you, if you think of the work that goes into this, you're not just creating the newsletter, but you're, you're having to write everything behind it. So it, it's brilliant for keeping people with you, um, telling a story in a lot of depth. Um, but maybe if you're just starting out, this would be this would be quite a big one to take on and certainly a big one to, to del deliver every week. Um, and here's another example of somebody who actually, having said that, he does do this every week. Um, this is another magazine style newsletter. You Are The Media is a UK company down on the South Coast. I um, mean, it's all about building a community. It's consistently bright and lively and it's a, a, an absolute reflection of its creator. He's a guy called Mark Masters. His newsletter is a community building tool. He launches conversations, he shares links to events and experiments with content. It works really well for him. His events are sold out. He attracts speakers from all over the world. Um, they, people contact him to appear on this platform he's created. And it kind of carries people on this big wave of fun and energy. It's not the most beautifully written newsletter, but there's something about the kind of the, the energy the color the all the stuff that he's doing that um that um sweeps you in with it um we we spoke to uh mark um about about his newsletter recently and he said um you're right about people starting one and the value it can bring everything i've built made money and having a central space has all been built around that you are the media newsletter and even during the pandemic it was the one place that was bomb proof as obviously events and things just didn't happen, but um, he kept things going through the newsletter. So just to recap the four newsletter styles, um, when you're picking one, bear these things in mind. The simple newsletter is straightforward, friendly, personal. It's light on brand and written just like an ordinary email from me to you. The skill you need if you want to go down that route is conversational writing. Carefully curated one is where you share good stuff with a like-minded tribe. It's got um, a design and links rather than lots of lots of text. Um, and if you want to go that way, you, you'll need to, to find a um, invest in some design love, get a good template, and work on your headline writing skills. For insider tips, you're sharing expert ideas that you won't get anywhere else. That could be text, it could be video, it could be visual. So pick the style that works best for you and your people. Um, if you go that route, you'll be consistently creating content in whatever format of your choice. So maybe like Coach Parry, you'll be doing weekly video, a weekly video tip to help you run or like Caroline, weekly cooking tips, weekly fermenting ideas. So you're creating the newsletter and the, the tips that go into it. 
Um, the magazine style is is really good for building brands. It's got more effort. It's got lots of value, and all the stories behind it are created. You're not you're not just sharing other people's stuff. You're you're doing it yourself. Um, so you kind of need that back engine. You need a good website. You need a, the, the sales to be working for you on, on the site. You need a, a well designed blog. All, all those things have to be in place as well. Um, and for all of the newsletter sites, um, any each any style that you pick, you'll need a plan. You'll need a really, really good knowledge of your audience. You need some ideas to share, um, some writing skills, at least basic ones, um, and a way of carving out regular time and energy to make it happen. And it helps to know how to build a newsletter list as well. Um, so how do you pick the right style for you and your business? Um, what is right for you? Kind of what option fits your style and personality? what's right for your business do you think it's mainly visual or mainly text what suits your business most um when I ran a, a course on this recently the people like Caroline who was the kefir one saying it's got to be visual people if they're cooking they want to see they want to see pictures you don't you don't just want words so think about what will suit suit what you're what you're selling or the kind of community that you're growing um, and what's right for your readers? What's the best way that you can add value? What do they really want to know from you? What will they sign up to, to hear from? What's, what will they kind of be delighted to receive in their inbox? Um, and just have a, a feel, what, what, what feels right to you? Um, and finally, I guess, what, what are the, the, there's some principles that I think all valuable newsletters share. Um, so any of these styles that I've shown you, they're all reader centric, so they're not company focused at all. They feel they feel like they're written for one person, for me. They're all helpful and inspiring and helping not selling is their primary aim. They're all sent regularly, so you can depend on them. They're consistent in style, so they're recognisable. You can see um, you can see straight away who they're from. You get to know, you get to recognize them and you're kind of happy to see them. They're a friendly, a friendly, recognizable face in your inbox. Um, they're all warm and personal, um, created by care with humans that have got heart and soul. That, that comes across in all the ones certainly that I subscribe to. And I suspect if you go through the ones that you like, um, you, you'll probably find, recognize some traits like that. You, you can tell that a person's written them who cares about you. Um, and they're written for a niche, it's clear who they're for. So they're never just company news, they're never kind of pushy or aggressive, they always build trust first and invite you to take the next step with a relevant offer. That relevant offer thing is, is important to keep in mind because they also, good newsletters do have a purpose, they do have a kind of call to action behind them, the, the, the person writing it is inviting you to usually to take another step with them. Um, and they're not written for everyone, they're just right for, their ideal reader so don't if you're starting a newsletter don't think that you want the whole world to read it just think I want to I want my group of people to read it my my audience um and build from there it doesn't matter if you start with an audience of one just start with start with one and and build so if you want to create a newsletter um where do you go from here I think probably the first thing is kind of commit to making it happen so I will I will launch a newsletter this autumn get your goal clear. What do you want your newsletter to do for you? That's really important. Work out who you want to talk to, who you want to see on the list, um, what fires them up. Um, a really good thing to do is to study other newsletters in your inbox and see what connects with them. Make some notes for yourself, see what ideas you can steal. Um, select um, an email marketing platform, build a list of your current contacts that you'd like to invite and invite them carefully to join work out the themes you want to cover, design your template, set the rhythm, write that first one and keep going. And if you'd like a helping hand and group accountability to get yours going, I've got a course starting up, up in September and you'd be really, really welcome to join me. Um, and that's it. Good luck with your newsletter. Thanks very much for having me. Thank you so much, Sharon. You've given us a lot to think about, and I think people are really going to be able to use this information to get their newsletters going or to take their existing newsletters to the next level. If anyone has questions for Sharon or for Poster My Wall, please put them in the comments and we will get back to you as soon as we can. If you'd like to download Sharon's presentation or contact her, the link to the bonus content for the class is in the class description. The bonus content also includes links to some great email newsletter templates that you can download. 
and some other goodies. So please do check it out. Next month, we're going to be demoing our all new Post to My Wall email marketing platform. But if you can't wait, there is a link in the description to a uh, how-to video that will help you get started now. You should know that absolutely everyone, everyone can have access to our email maker and use our gorgeous email marketing templates. However, to be able to send your emails directly from Post to My Wall, you need to have a premium or a premium plus subscription. Premium Plus subscriptions include 10,000 email sends per month, unlimited 4K video downloads, and use of our brand kits. So that is a really great deal. And if you don't know about our brand kits, check out last month's Poster My Wall Design Coffee Break, where we did a demo. It is a really great time saver. To make it easier for you to experience the uh, full capability of our email marketing platform, we have a promo code for you. The code is newsletter30, and that's good for 30% off on a subscription to either Poster My Wall Premium or Premium Plus. You can apply that to a new subscription or an upgrade, and you can do it for a monthly subscription or annual. So please do check that out too. That's it for today. We hope that you are leaving inspired to go out and create a truly fabulous newsletter. Please share this video with any friends or colleagues who create email newsletters. Until next time, thank you from Poster My Wall and enjoy the rest of your day.